Hello and welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida, where we make hard candy, but not today. Today we're sitting on my front porch and I'm answering your questions that you sent in through YouTube. And if you're looking for a candy video, we got plenty of them. Look elsewhere on this channel, subscribe while you're at it. Also, if you have a moment, you can help us out. You can go to Facebook. We're qualifying for a program on our Facebook page, and we need to have a certain number of one-minute video views. Now, we got two Facebook pages. We got Lofty Pursuits, which is about our retail store. We got Public Displays of Confection, which is about our um, our candy. That's the one you're probably more interested in. If you could go and watch a video or two, it would be really helpful. What is the difference between Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection? Well, Lofty Pursuits is our retail brick and mortar. Public Displays of Confection is our brand of candy that's owned by Lofty Pursuits. Who owns Lofty Pursuits? Well, I do. I'm Greg. I own it. I started it in 1993, and it started as just a toy store. And we've added things on over the years. We added on uh, ice cream, then candy making, and most recently breakfast. What happened to your Cane to Candy video? You did a Kickstarter campaign for it. But well, let me tell you the background of this. First of all, we're so thankful for our Kickstarter supporters. Second of all, we ended up making the wrong video. Let me go through the history of this. In 2016, I went out to shoot guys harvesting sugar cane and making it into cane syrup with the goal of making hard candy out of the cane syrup in the Tallahassee Museum. The Tallahassee Museum has a working farm from 1880. Old buildings, old equipment, old techniques. Same time period as my candy making equipment. I thought this would be a great experiment. I shot it and things were going on at the same time. I couldn't shoot it all by myself. The next year I did a Kickstarter so I could hire some people, I could get more equipment. And the response was amazing. And then I went out and shot in 2017 and I went back to the editing room and I discovered I shot the wrong video. What I mean by this is I shot the video about making cane syrup, but the people were the interesting bit. So I didn't shoot the video about them. I went back in 2018, I shot it again and I'm still editing it. The problem I'm discovering is I have about 60 hours of footage, and it's much harder to edit 60 hours of footage than the normal two or three I shoot for one of my videos uh, here on YouTube. It's coming along. My goal is for it to be the 100th candy video on, the, on my channel, but i got to tell you, it's going to be close. I don't think it's going to happen. I'm having trouble securing some music rights that I want because I want period music from this region as the background music. and. I don't want to release the video until I think that it's what I want it to be. You guys supported me so much to make the best possible video. This is going to be a good video if I do it right. I hope you're all going to be as happy as I hope I will be. The next question, that candy hook, it's on the wall. How do you clean it? It comes off the wall. It goes in a pot of boiling water. It's amazing what you can clean with boiling water. Next question, live streams, why don't you do live streams? We do do live streams. You just haven't seen it because you probably don't have alerts turned on for my channel. I do live streams often on our front porch doing live question and answers, but we don't keep them up on YouTube. I feel the purpose of a live stream is to be live and to interact, not to be recorded and to be seen later. So if you want to see it, I'll try to do one next week. Watch the alerts. Spoons. Don't the plastic spoons melt in the hot candy? The answer is no because they're not plastic, they're wood. I use little wooden spoons to stir the, sh the coloring in. This is kind of unique in candy making. Most candy makers use wooden popsicle sticks. Uh, but I buy these wooden spoons for lofty pursuits. You know, we're an ice cream store, and we do to-go ice cream, of course, and I try to have everything be uh, biodegradable. We have corn, corn plastic and uh, paper cups that compost in a normal commercial composter and we have wooden spoons and um, they're pretty cool. I like them better than popsicle sticks just because they have a bigger surface area. Um, how did you learn how to make hard candy? Well, I didn't intend to learn how to make hard candy. Let's start there. I became fascinated with it and I became fascinated with it a lot like you did but in person. So. I'm at a yo-yo contest, and I find this guy who makes hard candy. He brought some with him. He's the brother of a yo-yo player. He's not a yo-yo player himself. And he ended up um, wanting to move to Tallahassee for college. But he didn't have a job, and I set him up with a job, and I employed him for two years, paying him for two years full-time. And in the process, I got him to teach me how to make hard candy. Where did you find your old tools? All over the place is the incorrect answer, mostly by word of mouth. You see, when I started using the little crank machines, which is about two years after I learned how to make hard candy, I couldn't use them. 
They're much harder to use than you think. And I had to learn a whole lot about them. And this guy was coming through Tallahassee. He was a candy maker who knew how to use the equipment. An older gentleman. He spent a day with us, training us. And then he told other people about us. And these were old, retired candy makers, some in their late 80s. I don't know if any of them are with us anymore. And what they did was they um, contacted me. I talked to them. I contacted them. I learned a lot from them. I tried to record whatever information and knowledge they had before it was lost. Some of them gave me equipment. Some of them sold me equipment. And there was this one large batch of equipment that I tracked down that I didn't have the money for. The guy reduced the price, which was extremely generous, and I still didn't have money for it. And then I did a Kickstarter campaign, my first one. And you guys out there helped me pay for it. My goodness, it changed the business. I really got to go to YouTube here. YouTube has been a transforming experience. I did not expect this. My goal for YouTube was pretty simple. My store is next to the interstate and 100,000 cars drive by it a day. And I wanted to get some of them off the interstate to my store, which they weren't doing. But it has created friendships. It has allowed me to go around the country and visit the history of this country and the history of candy making. It's allowed me to do things I never could imagine doing. I mean, I even go to places. I went to Pensacon last weekend or the weekend before, and people recognized me there. It was a little creepy, frankly, but it was pretty cool, too. I got to bring candy and give it to people who knew who I was. I'm beginning to see why celebrities don't like celebrity, but it was still interesting in what it was. And I've been able to combine my love of art. I used to be a commercial artist, working really boring jobs until I started doing candy. But I've also been able to combine that with my love of history. I sort of believe that history is everywhere. Take my neighborhood here, and every neighborhood is like this, by the way. Um, maybe not to the same extent. Two blocks that direction is a ridge. And on this ridge, going about a mile this way and that way, uh, Hernando de Soto in 14... Oh, goodness. 1439, 1439, spent the winter here. He had the first Christmas with a priest in North America. The first Christmas mass was somewhere up here within a mile of my house. And my neighbors still find Indian arrowheads because he, they spent the time in an uh, Indian city that used to be here, an Indian village. And the, um, the Indians left the arrowheads. They find links of chainmail occasionally. They spent about six months up on this ridge. And they do archaeological digs in my neighborhood because of this. It's just a cool place to be. We're 20 miles from Wakulla Springs, where they filmed The Creature from the Black Lagoon. And if you haven't figured out in the background, it's one of my favorite movies. I actually get to meet, got to meet Rico Browning last weekend at Pensacon. That's where I went and why I went. And it's just a great way for me to tie reality, candy making, the things I love together, and tell stories. My wife says, I finally found people who are willing to listen to my stories. And that's you. So thank you very much. Check out our website at www.pd.net. Check out our candy there. Come and visit us in Tallahassee. We're right off I-10. Follow us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We try to post as much as we can when we're not making candy. And um, we hope we put a smile on your face. Uh, that's what this is all about, making people happy. Because if you do that, everything else comes together. We appreciate what you've done for us, and I hope you appreciate our channel. Thank you for watching, and thank you for watching.